Hello everyone. This video will go over the middle class atomas in hegemony. Similar to the standard game, the middle class is a hybrid of the working class and the capitalist, so their free actions are going to reflect what the other two factions can do. So for using healthcare, education, and luxury, any time that the middle class can increase their prosperity and they have the money to do so, they will do so. Adjusting prices, they this is going to automatically be performed by the middle class Atoma at the beginning of its turn. They always adjust their prices so they're in the middle position with the following exception. When policy 6A is in effect, it will raise the prices of food luxury to the highest values. If policy 4C is in effect, it will raise the price of its health to its highest value. And if 5C is in effect, it will raise the price of education to its highest value. When adjusting wages, uh, typically they will not adjust wages on their own. They keep the minimum allowable wage in the company as set by the labor policy. However, if they place their strike tokens. However, if the working class places strike tokens on their companies, the middle class will adjust their wages to L3 on the next turn. And then it will readjust the wages for its companies back to the minimum allowed uh, in the next round. When swapping workers, they will always be performed before assigning workers in simple mode. The middle class Atoma will receive benefits at the beginning of their turn. And when paying off loans, they will automatically pay off loans when they are able to at the beginning of their turn. For special actions, the middle class Atoma will only use the first condition at the top of the card if they are able to fulfill that condition, then the special action will occur. Unlike the capitalist class, the middle class special action card um, that has the special action on the top only has one criteria to be met. So once that criteria is met, then the, and the middle class player gets to do the special action on the bottom of the card. In the preparation phase, the middle class Atoma will only get rid of the companies that are in their market if they already have that type of company on the table. When buying goods and services, the middle class Atoma will try to buy quantities equal to its population. However, if it has resources on its player board, it will only buy the quantity it needs to reach its population total. In the rare case where the quantity is already equal to population, just like the working class, it will buy as if it did not have any of that resource. Now, since the middle class is in a unique position where it can get free resources, uh, free goods, free services from themselves, if it buys enough of the resource from itself to uh, reach its population, then if another source has enough of that good to also reach its population, it will buy enough to get another set of that good equal to its population. When health is excluded from consideration for buying goods and services, only exclude it if there are other options to buy. If it's the only resource you can buy because of cost or availability, buy it as you would normally. If the middle class player uses education and there are no unemployed workers, then they will, will randomly upgrade a working unskilled worker. Middle class will always buy from the cheapest source for food. They'll prioritize themselves first since they would get it for free. Beyond that, if they are unable to have enough food to cover their needs, they will then look at the state second, foreign market third, capitalist class. When assigning workers, some effects tell the middle class Atoma to get skilled workers from the supply first. If that is the case, when deciding which worker to get, skip the first bullet in the skilled worker criteria instruction card. And that deals with the types of skilled workers that the middle class Atoma's market needs. Typically, the middle class Atoma will try to assign unemployed workers, but there are some card effects that allow them to assign any number of workers. In that case, they will prioritize assigning their workers from the capitalist businesses to the public companies, as long as the wages that they would earn would be equal to or higher than those earned from working in the capitalist company. 
when building a company and deciding what to prioritize and prioritizing the fewest operational companies only factor in middle class companies. You could disregard the capitalist companies and the public companies. And finally, when selling to the foreign market, the middle class Atoma will sell as much as it can. The way that the action cards work for the Atoma is that the top row are the actions that the Atoma could take. Right below that are the political policies that the Atoma will focus on if they uh, use the election card on their turn. If they are unable to do any of the four actions that they prioritize, and they prioritize left to right, so they take this action first. If they're unable to do that, they would do this one. And if they can't do that, this one, and so on. If they are unable to do any of them, they would take the special action on the bottom of the card. And if they are still unable to do the special action, they would apply political pressure and put three of their cubes into the election bag. Now, if they're able to do the very first action, they also get the bonus that's on the middle of the card. The middle class Atoma has the most actions out of all three of the factions, but these are the same actions as the other classes and they're just combined together. Proposing a bill in simple mode, you would take the bill that is on the card and, and look at the two different policies there. Prioritize the one on the left first. And if for the middle class player, uh, foreign trade is at 6B, then you would do nothing with that. But if it was at an A or C, then you could propose a bill to change that. Whereas fiscal policy, if foreign trade was at 6B, fiscal policy, the desire is for it to be at 1B. If it is there, then you wouldn't do nothing with it. But if it's at A or C, you would propose the policy for B. Selling to the foreign market when performing that action, uh, you have to do at least two transactions on the ex export card that currently exists. Uh, you could do more than that, and you could do as many as you're capable of doing beyond that, but there has to be at least two. Special action we already talked about. Uh, you have to meet the first condition on the um, uh, on the card to then get the bonus. Buying goods and services, you have to be able to reach your population with how much you have of that good. So if your population is five, you have to be able to buy enough to reach that level of five. If your population is equal to the uh, amount of goods that you have, then you can buy another set of that. So if your population is five and you have five uh, luxury, then you could buy another five luxury, but you have to be able to do so. When you build a company, you have to have a company on your market that you can afford to build, and you also have to be able to have enough workers to assign to that company to put it into operation. And finally, for assigning workers, you have to be able to assign at least two unemployed workers to a company to make The things. criteria to buy goods and services would be, first of all, find uh, the goods that are free. Second, if you have three or more unemployed skilled workers, you can buy the education. Uh, then you go for the cheapest item. You exclude health if it would lead to a population increase and other options are available. But again, emphasize if other options are available. If there aren't, then health is a, a viable option. From there, education, then health, then luxury, and after that, you would buy from the public services, then the foreign market, then the capitalist class. In building a company, you would prioritize the following. First of all, unemployed working class workers available to fill their slots. Next, requiring middle class workers only. From there, industry with the fewest operational companies. And then you would do healthcare education, uh, but then whichever service is not being produced would be highest priority. Second would be whichever is more expensive and then random between the two from their agriculture, luxury, media, then the highest production and then at random. Note, you never build a company if you already have two companies of the same industry when you are the middle class. And this limits you, uh, but also protects you from having a whole bunch of one good 
but not having the other ones available. It allows for balance to remain. In. When assigning middle-class workers, the priorities would be, first of all, most unemployed workers are assigned. And then next would be highest wages. Third would be public company. Next one would be capitalist company. Then would be healthcare and education companies and whichever are not being produced, whichever is cheaper and random between the two. And then finally, agricultural, media, luxury, and then at random. When assigning working class workers, you would consider the following. First priority would, to be, would be to make sure the current production of the company's resource is less than your storage limit. Then you do not have any other companies in that industry. Third would be you do not cause the requirements for a trade union to be met. Fourth would be agricultural. Fifth, education and healthcare. You prioritize uh, whichever one is not being produced, then whatever is more expensive or random, then luxury, then media, and finally at random. When considering which skilled workers to add to the supply, you would prioritize the following. First of all, which ones are needed by companies in your market? which ones are needed by companies in your market. And since you have a limitation of two of each type of company that you can buy, you can exclude the companies you already have two of that type. If you have more than one option, uh, you would prioritize needs by companies for which there are enough other workers to make them operational. So which companies are already on the table without workers. Uh, then you would go to um, the skilled workers needed by companies of an industry of which you don't have any, and you would prioritize agriculture, health, education, healthcare, luxury, and media. From there, you would check which ones are needed by non-operational capitalist class and public class companies, capitalist class and public companies, then go to needed by companies in the capitalist classes market, and then finally, if none of those criteria before are met, you would do it at random. And finally, the action that is unique to the middle class, the extra shift, you would prioritize the following. Note that you're excluding media companies. First of all, space is available in your storage to store what is produced. Second of all, you've got two middle class workers. Third, you have a non-committed working class worker. Fourth, agricultural company. Fifth, healthcare or education company, and prioritize whichever one's not being produced, whichever is more expensive or random between the two. And then finally, luxury. So that is the core of how the simple Atoma plays. In upcoming videos, we'll go over the setups for the advanced Atoma and how that mechanic is different than the, the simple Atoma. And we'll also give some attempts at playing through some rounds of gameplay with the Atoma rules and recording that as well.